all it's Jess from Sunflower Dairy and I am out here in front of the garden and it's about the middle of June and it's time for me to give you all a garden tour because the garden is exploding everything's growing everything's huge and it's time for you all to get your first garden tour of my garden for the season because it's warm here, it's rained a couple times, and stuff is starting to get huge. And I like to give you all a weekly update and garden tour so that you all can see what's growing in the garden, how things are growing, what I'm planting, what's producing, what we're harvesting. So we're in zone 5B, 6A, and here we go. I'm gonna give you all a garden tour. So first of all, I want to show you all this poppy. Just check out the ruffles in this. Isn't that gorgeous? So for poppies, you want to plant early, early spring, as soon as the snow melts, because they say that poppies really love the cold. So the best time to plant them is right after snow melt. I also have heard that people say that if you just sprinkle poppy seeds on top of the snow that they also grow super well like that as well. So get your poppies planted as soon as possible. These are gorgeous. So this is the earliest that I've ever planted poppies and this year I have poppies all over my garden. Usually I only have a couple but this year the whole garden has poppies everywhere. So I have a lot of these ruffly poppies. I have single layered poppies. I have bread seed poppies. So I'm excited to show you all those. Next up, I wanna show you all these potatoes. So this whole raised bed is potato plants and I planted potatoes, you know, just your basic potatoes, you know, they had eyes on them, took a whole potato, and I just planted them in this raised garden box. Now, if you want to watch a video of how I plant potatoes, you can go back. I have a video on that, but these potatoes are doing crazy well. Actually, if I look down here in side of these potatoes, on top of the ground, I'm starting to see little potatoes starting to pop through the ground. So if you were to start doing that, either start putting more soil or straw or compost on top of them so that the potatoes can keep growing. And you don't want your potatoes to get sunlight after they're starting to grow out of the ground the actual potatoes that you're going to eat because they will start turning green and that's really not good for you. So you wanna keep your potatoes covered so that they can keep growing and start producing more potatoes for you and you want them to be protected from the sun. All right, so I've been growing a garden for a lot of years and since I have, you know, things in my garden keep reseeding, well, this year, a lot of my herbs are reseeding. So all of this right here is chamomile and it all reseeded. I did not plant a single chamomile plant this year at all. And this is all chamomile and it's all over all of my gardens, everywhere. So chamomile, once you plant it once, you should have chamomile everywhere. Same with cilantro. All of this behind me is cilantro. Crazy, right? And yes, cilantro actually does not like the heat. It likes the cold. So the best time to plant cilantro is in the fall or early, early, early spring. Like just in between snow melt and the ground thawing. So, once you plant cilantro, you'll probably have cilantro again. 
but I leave cilantro after it starts going to seed because the pollinators like the bees and the butterflies and all that love it and anytime you can have something to attract pollinators to your garden your garden is going to do so much better because you know that's going to be attracting all the bees and butterflies to your garden which you need those for you know all of your fruits and vegetables like your peppers your tomatoes your peas your eggplants your you know all all of your vegetables you know your fruit trees you know, berry bushes, all of that. You need pollinators for your garden. So having flowers or flowering herbs, any of that to attract pollinators like bees and butterflies to your garden is very beneficial. All right, just take a look at all of these. Okay, so some people call this calendula. Some people call this calendula whatever you want to call it you use these to make salve so you'll take off the actual flowers and you will put these in oil like say olive oil or coconut oil or grapeseed oil and you will soak these for a few weeks to get all the benefits from this flower to make salve and that's exactly what I do also, this is another flower. Once you plant it, it's probably going to reseed because I did not plant a single one of these this year and my garden is covered. Just look at all these behind me. They're everywhere. And all the butterflies and everything love these as well. Also, these are edible, so you can put these on your salads or, you know, if you're doing any kind of baking, like to decorate cakes or cookies or, you know, any kind of edible decorations, these are perfect for that. Also, here's another one of the poppies I was talking about earlier. Look how beautiful this is. And these behind me are actually flowering radishes. Now I planted radishes early early spring like super early like March April and you know I was harvesting these quite a bit because radishes actually mature very quickly like 20 to 30 days so that is a fast growing crop if you want food very quickly. Now radishes are better tasting in the cold because as soon as it gets really hot radishes start getting super spicy. So I usually only harvest radishes when it's cooler out and I also really like not only planting radishes early early spring but also in late fall. That is an awesome time to plant radishes if you want to get a few more crops in before, you know, the actual really cold weather. But I leave the radish flowers, again, for pollinators for the garden. And I'll just pull one of these real quick to show you that they actually are radishes under these flowers right here. See? They're 100% a radish. And I have heard that not only can you eat the radish root, but I have heard people talking about the actual radish seed pods when they're green. I've heard of some people putting these on their salads, kind of like a, it's like a, you know, spicy, crunchy, you know, kind of like a texture of like a pea or a green bean or something like that, just something crunchy that people like to put on their salads. I've heard of people doing that as well. But radishes are a super fast growing crop. So this year I'm growing a lot of basil in here. So this here is basil. I'm growing a lot of basil to make pesto because I just love pesto on sandwiches or pasta or just, you know, all kinds of things. You can use basil and all kinds of things. 
you're cooking. I also like to put basil in tomato sauce and as seasoning and dry it out. Use it for cooking. So there's so many benefits to basil. And also if you let basil flower, which I don't recommend till the end of the season when you're about done using your basil. But if you let this flower, this is also something that the pollinators like as well. All right, so on this trellis behind me, I have all kinds of vining beans that are vining all over this. And can you check out these orange flowers? These are scarlet runner beans. I've never grown these before, but the flowers on these are gorgeous. Let me give you a better look. But just check out the flowers on these. These are just completely gorgeous. All right, so if you check these out, these are actually onions that were from the garden last year and these are starting to go to seed. But just look at how cool these look. So these will flower, which the pollinators love, and you can collect a ton of onion seeds from these. So after these flower, each year I will leave a couple onions in the garden just so these can flower. And then you can collect your onion seed for your onions next year. So you'll just, when you start your seeds, you will start these as well for your onions. So these will be your onion seed for next year. Check out the size of these peas. These are huge. So I planted these just as the snow was melting. So that's why these are so huge. Actually, when I grow peas, I actually plant them sooner than a lot of people in my area. And usually I get peas producing before anyone else in my growing zone because I plant them so early. Just check these out. They are so good. And after these are producing, they'll start dying back. And then I will put more in the ground and then I will have a fall crop of peas. But I have so many different varieties. So I have these really huge ones that are pretty big. Like look at, they're about as big as my hand is across. And then I have, these are called blush peas. See they're the pinkish color. So see the difference with those and then I have these golden peas here so green blush and then golden and then also have purple trindle peas so all different colors and varieties which makes this super fun for harvesting with all of these really cool varieties so my rhubarb this year in the garden is flowering and I want to show you how tall this rhubarb flower is it's taller than me That's crazy, and I'll show you real quick that it actually is indeed rhubarb. See, that's all rhubarb leaves, but rhubarb once in a while will send up a flower. And this one this year is crazy huge. So this garden that we were just in is known as the main garden or the kitchen garden. So pretty much whenever I need something when I'm cooking in the kitchen, this is the garden that I run out to and grab stuff from. So this is our main kitchen garden, but I have several other gardens and I want to show you real quick what all is in all the other gardens. So let's head over to the other gardens. All right, so this garden over here is known as the second garden. So, you know, this is where I plant like 
when I plant, I plant a lot. Like my other garden, I do a really big variety of you know, just all kinds of different stuff that I would need in the kitchen. So I have tons of variety over in the main kitchen garden. But this garden is basically for production. So I want this second garden is basically so like say I'm planting tons and tons and tons of tomatoes for tomato sauce. So there's going to be mainly tomatoes over here or tons and tons of onions to store onions to last the whole year until next year or there's also garlic over here to save garlic for next year or there's cabbage over here to make sauerkraut so basically this is the garden where I plant a lot of certain things for the following year and to match to actually make things so that we have it. So this is the garden that's going to be, you know, tons of tomatoes, tons of onions, tons of cabbage, tons of garlic, tons of cucumbers. You know, this is the garden that just produces tons of stuff. Unlike the other garden, the other garden just has a big variety of everything and when I'm cooking in the garden I just run out there and grab what I need and then this is our actual like production garden. Alright, so this garden bed here, there's several different tomatoes in it. There's also garlic. This is garlic with garlic scape, so which is called a hard neck garlic. So a hard neck garlic produces these scapes. So you can cut these scapes off so that they don't flower, so that the energy will go into making your actual bulb of garlic so that you have a bigger bulb of garlic to use. And then you can also use these to make pesto. A lot of people use these for pesto. Or you can, you know, I've heard of people pickling these or you can do all kinds of things with these. But there's so many things you can do with garlic scapes. I also have peppers around the corner here. So in through here, this is all peppers. All right, so this next garden box here, this is also mainly tomatoes as well. So, so many different kinds of tomatoes. So I plant a whole big variety of tomatoes because I use all different kinds of tomatoes for different things. Like I, I use like, you know, paste tomatoes to make sauce or I use cherry tomatoes, you know, for snacking or you can dehydrate those and, you know, use them as like sun-dried tomatoes for you know, flavoring olive oil or putting on pizza or things like that. Or, you know, big slicers for sandwiches. So I grow all different kinds of tomatoes for different things. There's also tons of onions in this garden bed as well. And this is the other side of this garden bed and I have a couple sunflowers over here. I have rosemary over here. I have quite a few cucumbers over here. And I have a couple dahlia flowers because that's just fun and you need dahlias for pollinators. All right, so you saw all my bigger garden beds with tomatoes, which were huge. Well, this year I am kind of doing an experiment. So I'm planting tomatoes earlier which those were the tomatoes I showed you and then I'm doing another round of later tomatoes because the tomatoes that I first planted will be like early summer tomatoes and these tomatoes that I just planted which are still small these are going to be late summer and fall tomatoes so usually our first frost in the fall is usually the middle of October so if I timed it right and if the weather cooperates I should be able to get 
a few rounds of fall tomatoes in before we actually get our first frost. But there's a few little tiny tomatoes that I put in here. So hopefully I can get a fall harvest of tomatoes after my early tomato plants are done producing. I'll have these to keep producing fall tomatoes. All right, next up is the cabbage bed. So I have several different cabbages in here. I have green cabbages in here, I have purple cabbages in here, all different kinds of cabbages. I also have onions in here because they say that onions help keep cabbage moths away. I don't know if that's completely true, but I'm gonna give it a go because if they can help keep the cabbage moths away, you need all the help you can get to keep those cabbage moths away. Now also, I heard that cabbage moths really like green cabbages, and I heard that they don't really like purple cabbages. So I planted my green cabbages in the middle, and I planted purple cabbages on the outside to hopefully kind of hide the green cabbages. And if the purple cabbages are on the outside, I'm thinking that they'll kind of help protect green cabbages. So far I'm seeing very minimal, I don't want to speak too soon, but I'm seeing very minimal cabbage moth damage. So I'm hoping that this is actually working or maybe this is just, you know, not as bad of a season for cabbage moths, but we'll see. These are doing really well. They're starting to actually form cabbages, which I'll show you. They're actually doing really well all right so lastly in this garden i have a couple more beds of tomatoes with garlic and onions and then i also behind me i have a no-till garden bed with popcorn in it and then behind me i also have something else in this garden that i want to show you as well too All right, so I have this landscape fabric down, which I burned holes in. And if you all have seen my other videos, you saw me doing this in another garden, but I also did this here as well. And I have all kinds of cut flowers planted here. So in all of these holes in this garden fabric, that I put down I have a bunch of cut flowers so like zinnias and you know just all kinds of cut flowers so this is going to be a big space for cut flowers which I'm really excited about to see when this is fully in bloom this is going to be gorgeous and I will make sure that you all get to see this because I have a million I have a feeling that this is going to look pretty amazing and I'm really excited for how beautiful this is going to be. Alright, so this here is a little DIY cattle panel greenhouse. So we put this together and I planted watermelons in here. So I will give you a look around in here and show you the watermelons that we planted in this. All right, so I have several different kinds of watermelons and melons in here. So I planted them in here because watermelons and other kinds of melons usually need lots of heat or warmth to grow. And they also need like humidity and moisture, which a greenhouse is gonna help hold that in, you know, you will need to water quite a bit because greenhouses get really hot. So, you know, the water does evaporate, but the actual greenhouse plastic is going to keep the actual moisture down around your plants longer than like if you watered outside, you know, the water would just go right away from your plants. For the most part, this is going to kind of keep it in a you know more desired area for your actual plants so we have watermelons planted in this and this is going to look pretty cool when this is all vined out with watermelons 
All right, so this here is our actual big high tunnel greenhouse. So this is this is a really big greenhouse. And so we do a lot of our seed starting in here, but I also have a garden bed in here, which is also growing all kinds of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's growing in this big greenhouse. All right, so this is the actual big greenhouse garden bed, and there's all kinds of things in here. So I had spinach over the winter, which that's starting to go to seed. I have tomatoes in here. There's eggplant in here. There's cucumelon vines in here. They're starting to vine up this little mini, little mini trellis. There's artichoke plants in here. There's a bunch of pepper plants in here. There's a lot growing in here. I also have a bunch of seeds that are growing and a bunch more plants that I have started from seed in here, which I'm going to be planting out. So I'll show you some of those plants that I have started over there on the seed starting rack. All right, so I have a few more eggplants started over here. This here is nasturtium I have started here. There's a few more fall tomato plants started here. There's some marigolds started here. Some cut flowers. There's a couple more gourds and cucumelon started here. There's some more cut flowers like yarrow and asters and paper flowers. There's some status in here and there's snapdragons in here there's also celosia in here there's a couple more trays of cut flower seeds that I started there's a few more snapdragons there's a few sunflowers started in here zinnias a whole bunch of basil this is, well this here is Celosia, and this here is Amaranth, and then these are straw flowers here, and then this is Status here, and then I also have a couple Dahlias. Alright, so this is another big garden area behind me and so this is an in-ground garden and so I put this landscape fabric or garden fabric down and I showed you all how I burned holes in this and I planted squash so I have squash planted behind me in this landscape fabric and then behind that all of that green area that's going to be sweet corn and there's also wheat in there and there's also a couple cut flowers and then I also have a couple more things to show you I had to show you all my poppies behind me because I planted these last year and they all receded. Look how gorgeous all of these are. So these all receded. I didn't plant them. So yeah, if you plant poppies, you might have poppies again, but look how beautiful these are. These are gorgeous and I wanted to show you all this. Okay, I have a couple more cut flower gardens I want to show you all. All right, so I have this little cut flower garden, which of course you see the sunflower dairy sign, but I have this in here is all cut flowers. So in that cut, area, cut flower area, there's some borage growing, there's bachelor buttons growing, there's zinnias planted in there, sunflowers planted in there, there's cosmos planted in there, Celosia, there's some decorative barley and wheat for cut flowers, there's some asters in there, there's paper flowers in there, straw flowers in there, 
and just so many other flowers I can't even name all of them so I'm really excited this whole circle around our sunflower dairy sign is gonna be just all cut flowers and I'm so excited for how beautiful that's gonna be all right so this garden here next to me is going to be gladiolas 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 so gladiolas for cut flowers there's also big large daisies and black-eyed susans and there's echinacea and just all different bee balm and just this is going to be a really beautiful cut flower area All right, all, I hope you have enjoyed this garden tour and there's going to be more garden tours to come. So make sure you're on the lookout for the weekly garden tours so you can get an update how all the gardens are growing, what's, what's producing, what we're harvesting, what we're planting. And if you're in the same growing zone as us, so you can kind of get an idea, you know, when you should be planting and harvesting things in your gardens. But thank you all for watching. Have a blessed day.